Hello and welcome to the 8th episode of the RP1 series. Last time we just impacted the moon on September 11th, 1959, two days before the Soviets did it in real life. This episode, we're going to be sending much more stuff to the moon. The first thing I'm going to do is accept the second lunar impactor contract. Then I'm going to pop in the R&D and buy the crew survivability, which is the last node we need to unlock before we gain access to the basic capsules. And now I'm going to upgrade mission control for 60,000 funds. And then we can warp to our next flight. Huh? I actually ended up getting a bit more science, which I didn't expect. It turns out that our satellite from last time, which flew by the moon, got close enough to transmit some science. With this science, I'm going to unlock the basic capsules. Here we are getting ready to launch our third lunar probe. And we're lifting off from the pad. And then I'm going to engage the roll program. And then we're on our way. Here is the third stage reaching orbit. I can then plot the maneuver node and head out to the moon. I sped up the payload well ahead of time because when we reach TLI, we won't have any connection to do so. I then ignited the aerobee to finish lunar transfer. And here we are, we're almost burning out to the moon. Oh no. Looks like we had an engine failure and I don't think we're gonna make it. I can try to use some of my engines, my SRBs for orbital maneuvering, but we weren't really able to raise our APWAPs high enough. I tried changing our craft's orientation so I could use the retro rockets to fire us prograde, but it was unsuccessful. But we did get science from high Earth orbit. Here we are on the launch pad yet again, launching yet another rocket. I'm warping for our transfer window, and this one's gonna be at night, and here we go. We ended up reaching an orbit of 194 by 191. And then I could spin up the payload and ignite the SRBs for TLI. And yet another engine failure. This time we're not getting anywhere close to the moon. After spending some science and R&D, it was time to launch yet another lunar mission. This launch was also a night launch. It had to be in order to launch into the same plane as the moon. I can then warp to a point where we have connection, spin up the craft, and then prepare for TLI. Here I am getting ready to cut off our engines and cut. Oh, we went a bit overboard, but we can trim our orbit a little bit and that ended up getting us a little closer to the moon. I then tried to shoot another engine, which got us a bit closer, but really 
it didn't turn out very well. We weren't really going to get into lunar orbit, but we did get a pretty good flyby, and we were able to collect quite a bunch of science. Another rocket, another lunar mission. Here we are warping to launch. This time it's a day launch. It's actually in the afternoon and we're lifting off the pad. This time I aimed for a high orbit of 350 kilometers. This way we need less fuel for PLI. This time I'm hoping to be more of a lunar impactor than an orbiter, because I feel like that's a contract I can more easily complete. And then I'm going to use my orbital trimming motors to try and get us an impact. Nice. We are arriving at the moon. I'm going to turn on our science experiments, and then we're going to crash into the surface. going to hire some Kerbals, and I am adamant they will get to orbit before Yuri Gagarin will. Then I spent a bunch of science in R&D. We spent a lot of upgrades on electricity and avionics and stuff. We are on the pad getting ready for another daytime launch. We're igniting the engines and lifting off from the pad. We are at Miko and second stage ignition. and we reach an orbit of about 315 kilometers. Here I am getting ready for TLI. This craft actually has a trick up its sleeve. You might notice it right now. It's slightly different than the previous ones. Here I am igniting the aerobee, and we are making our way to the moon. I cut off our engines prematurely, but that's okay, because this craft actually has RCS. Now, I don't have deep space avionics unlocked yet, and it weighs too much anyways, so these are actually hooked up to an action group. That way, I can control the craft without actually having deep space avionics. Here I am getting a close encounter at the moon. We used all of our RCS fuel for that, so it's kind of stupid, but whatever. I then tried to turn my craft around so I could use my other large SRBs to slow us into an orbit. It actually worked semi-well. I then fired the engines, and we were in orbit. It wasn't the orbit that the contract required, but we can collect a whole bunch of science from this mission. Here we are on the launch pad with an identical craft. This time I'm going to be more conservative with our RCS fuel. I'm lifting off from the pad. Here we are at second stage ignition. And third stage ignition. pretty good job. I got much closer to the moon, which means I'm using much less RCS fuel to get a close encounter.
I can then despin the craft using RCS before pointing it towards the maneuver node and respinning it. I can then ignite an SRB, which puts us into a nice lunar orbit, but not good enough to complete the contract, so I ignite a second one. Now, the contract is completed. But I have a smaller SRB, which I can use to get us down into low lunar space. This way we get even more science. And that contract gave us a lot of funds. I can then accept another lunar orbiter contract. And then I'm gonna build a new launch pad. Here I am running some science experiments in low lunar space. This probe gets extremely close to the surface, as you can see. And every time it gets close, it can run different ex science experiments for different biomes. That's a lot of science. With all that science, I'm going to spend a ridiculous amount of stuff in R&D. 